the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'm Dia Wagas back in Houston and like to welcome everyone to today's GlomCon seminar, Precision Medicine, a serology guided approach to the treatment of PLA2R associated membranous nephropathy. And we are very excited today to have Dr. Richard Glassick, Emeritus Professor of Medicine at UCLA's Geffen School of Medicine, join us. Uh, we're, he has been a wonderful supporter of GlomCon. We're happy to have him speak here. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Dia. I'm very pleased to be back. Uh, in the uh, seat of uh, teaching for GlomCon, uh, this uh, franchise uh, that we call GlomCon has, uh, has really achieved uh, many great things in the learning sphere. And uh, I want to extend my great, uh, my hearty congratulations to all of the GlomCon team for all that they have done to uh, bring uh, nephrology, particularly glomerular disease, uh, uh, to the global nephrology community. Now, uh, the, the and thanks also for that nice introduction. Uh, I really enjoy participating in these events. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, the topic I've chosen for today um, falls into the genre of uh, cutting edge medicine, uh, or many would call it uh, pushing the envelope. And what I'd like to do is to sort of give you a progress report of where we stand in this uh, intriguing arena of precision medicine as it is applied to uh, membranous nephropathy. I have a few disclosures. Uh, I am a compensated consultant to several companies developing novel agents for the treatment of membranous nephropathy. I am the editor-in-chief of the glomerular disease section of Up to Date. I don't think these uh, <coughs> disclosures will have any uh, material influence on what I'm going to tell you today. Now, a precision medicine uh, in the broadest sense is uh, a therapeutic strategy that embodies the right drug at the right dose, the right duration at the right time and the right patient. Now, uh, this uh, must be compared to the one size fit up fits all, which is sort of the opposite strategy, where one treats empirically with the same regimen for all patients, regardless of their individual characteristics. And for much of the past of membranous nephropathy, we have operated in this empiric one-size-fits-all approach. But as I'll try to share with you today, I think that is changing. Uh, and uh, it is changing in the case of membranous nephropathy, mainly because of uh, epoch-making discoveries in the field of serology. The Precision Medicine Initiative is broadly invaded in medicine and includes omics, microbiology, biochemistry, morphology, and cell biology, in addition to serology, but I'm only going to be discussing serology today. So uh, let's start with a very brief introduction to membranous nephropathy, uh, which is uh, a pattern of injury lesion. It is not a specific disease entity, uh, but it is commonly associated with organ-limited autoimmunity. Dr. Glassick, would you mind sharing the um, in presenter view, if you don't mind? What's that? Would you mind sharing it in the presenter view? What am I doing wrong? Well, we can see the. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. I see. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, thank you, sir. That's better. Okay, thank you for reminding me. Uh, now, many antigens are involved in membranous nephropathy, and as of the end of March 2023, there are 29, 29 such antigens. Quite a diverse uh, population. Of course, uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it was only one. So there's been enormous growth in this area. About 80% of the membranous nephropathy lesions are considered to be primary, that is renal limited, and about 20% secondary to a systemic disease. And about uh, 5 to 10% of primary membranous nephropathy are due to unknown antigens. Uh, more than 90% of primary MN can now be attributed to one antigen or another. Uh, the percentage uh, that is positive for anti-PLA2R autoantibody or PLA2R antigen in the deposits uh, is found about 50 to 80% of primary membranous, but this depends largely on age and region of the world. It's a little lower in uh, China and in young children than it is in the U.S. and older adults. A genetic...